Uh, Mr. Heffern here, and here's a video on the law of conservation of momentum. One of my favorite laws, actually. So, uh, momentum, total momentum, is always conserved in all interactions. When objects collide or explode, the total momentum is conserved. 100%, uh, so it's even better than the law of conservation of energy, where there might be some heat loss or heat gain. There is no loss or gain with momentum. So uh, one way to write it is like this. Your uh, total initial momentum is equal to your total final momentum. Um, and okay, Or um, your um, initial I momentum is equal to your final momentum F. So if you have two objects, the first object's initial plus the second object's initial will be equal to the uh, first object's final plus the second object's final. Now if you find this is a lot of subscripting and you want to try something different, instead of I and F, you can use prime. So um, if you don't put a prime down, it's initial. And when you put this little symbol here, the prime symbol on in uh, the equation, that means after. So instead of an I and an F, it's just a no prime and a prime. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, five kilogram bowling ball moving at 10 meters per second forward strikes a one and a half kilo bowling pin, which is at rest, head on. So this is going to be a one-dimensional um, interaction. Afterwards, the ball ends up moving at 5.4 meters per second forward. Find the velocity of the bowling pin. So uh, using the I and F notation, uh, we got PI equals PF, P1I plus P2I equals P1F plus P2F. And so probably object one will be the bowling ball and object two will be the pin. They're going to have uh, an interaction. There's going to be an action-reaction force pair occurring here. And then they're, they're both going to be moving after. The bowling ball should slow down and the bowling pitch should go flying off. So when we're going to replace the P's with the um, equation for momentum. Mass times speed or velocity plus mass times velocity equals mass times velocity plus mass times velocity. Uh, I'll fill it in. So we get uh, 5 kilos times 10 meters per second plus 1.5 kilos times at rest, 0 is equal to the 5 kilos times 5.4 plus 1.5 kilos for the pin times its final velocity. And so we're going to getting uh, 50 kilogram meters per second of uh, momentum input into the situation. The bowling ball still has 27 after the interaction. And when we solve for the bowling pin, it has to fly off at 15.3 meters per second forward. Okay, using the other notation, if you don't like to use I's and F's, you can just go uh, use the prime notation. So we got our, um, our P is equal to P prime. P1 plus P2 is equal to P1 prime plus P2 prime. And in this case here, instead of using 1's and 2's, you can label the objects B for bowling ball and P for pin. You don't have to use 1 and 2. So here we got MBVB for the bowling ball plus MPVP for the bowling pin is equal to MBVB prime plus MPVP prime. Then you stick in the same numbers, and we get the same answer. So VP prime is 15.3 meters per second. Okay, here's another example here. So in this case here, uh, an 80 kilogram flash moving at 100 meters per second tackles a 400 kilogram standing still juggernaut. They become entangled, they're stuck together, find their velo uh, final velocity. So in this case here, we have PI equals PF. Uh, so F for the flash, J for juggernaut, so PFI plus PJI equals PFF plus PJF. You can see how uh, subscripts can be a bit of a problem here. Um, and so maybe it's just uh, easy. Okay, so uh, when we stick in the numbers, we're going to have um, 80 kilogram flash times 100 meters per second plus a 400 kilo juggernaut times zero is equal 80 times the um, final velocity of the flash plus 400 times the final velocity of the juggernaut. Now they have to have the same velocity since they're stuck together. So we could just add up the total mass, 480 times the velocity of the flash and the juggernaut in the final velocity, F, so FJF, and we end up getting 16.7 uh, meters per second. So uh, the flash runs into the juggernaut, they get stuck together, and they move together. So using the other notation might be a little easier this time. So P is equal to P prime, uh, we have two separate objects to begin with, one being the flash, two being the juggernaut. And because they're stuck together, you can treat them as, these, as a specific, um, as their own little um, 
objects. So we're going to be M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to M3 V3 prime. Uh, and when we put the numbers in, we get the same answer. Okay, and here's a third example. Uh, in this case here, we're going to start off with one object, a skating couple. And then they're going to throw each other and end up separated. So here we got the figure skater dance pair moving at 10 meters per second forward together. The 80 kilogram male tosses the 60 kilogram female backwards. And the male partner ends up moving at 13 uh, meters per second forward. Okay, so now we're just going to find the female's final velocity. So we got PI equals PF. We got uh, the female F and the male M. So PFI plus PMI, they're together, is going to be equal to PFF plus PMF. And so we sub in the uh, MVs for the, for the Ps, sub in our numbers. So 60 uh, kilogram female times 10 meters per second plus an 80 kilogram male times 10 meters per second is going to be equal to the 60 kilogram final female's velocity plus the 80 kilogram male at 13. And when we solve, the female will be still moving forward at 6 meters per second. Okay, now if you like the other notation, once again, uh, we can treat the couple as an object. So that's 0 for one object. And then they're going to split into objects 1 and 2. So in this case here, we got P equals P prime, P0 equals P1 prime plus P2 prime. Um, split up the P's into their MV's, sub in the numbers, and we get the same answer again. All right, so conservation momentum is really Newton's third law in disguise. Uh, recall impulse was really Newton's second law in disguise from a previous movie. So let's quickly review how impulse was the second law. So you got your impulse is equal to the change momentum, which is equal to force times uh, the interval time. When you rearrange that, your force is equal to change momentum over time, which in uh, calculus is the derivative of momentum with respect to time, the ddt of the, of the p. Uh, and of course, P is just MV. So if you take the derivative of mass times speed, velocity, you get the chain rule, mass times dV dt plus V times dm dt. Well, dV dt is just a fancy way of saying acceleration, A. And uh, dm dt, usually there's no change in mass, so we just put a zero in and we get F equals ma. Now, let's true the, the third law is actually um, conservation momentum. So here's the conservation momentum formula, P equals P prime. You have two objects, P1 plus P2 equals P1 prime plus P2 prime. Sub in the MVs, M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. We'll go back to the other notation. So we'll use uh, V1i and V2i, V1f and V2f. Rearrange the equation as such. And you'll see that this is the change in uh, momentum or the impulse on object 2, m2 v2f minus m2 v2i. And this is the impulse equation here for uh, the first object, m1 v1f subtract m1 v1i. So basically we've just shown that uh, the conservation momentum formula is actually just the, uh, the negative uh, impulse 2 equal to impulse 1. Okay, so now what we're going to do is turn this into Newton's uh, third law. So remember, impulse is really just your um, change in momentum over time. So we're going to factor out the mass times the change in velocity over time. Um, and remember, change in uh, velocity over time is just acceleration. So this is uh, negative mass 2 times acceleration 2 equals mass 1 times acceleration two, uh, 1. And that... Okay, and that is just the uh, negative F2 reaction equal to F1 action force. So I've just shown here that uh, conservation momentum is really just um, negative J2 impulse equals the J1 impulse. And we've shown that that is actually the negative 2 F2 reaction force is equal to the F1 action force. So uh, it is really Newton's uh, third law in disguise. So uh, now, depending on the problem, you have many options on how to solve the problem. You can use P equals P prime, or uh, P total initial is equal to P total final. That's really the same as uh, negative J2 equals J1. And that's really the same as negative F reaction of 2 on 1 is equal to F action of 1 on 2. All right, so there's always before conditions. You have a force pair interaction, so like a reaction force and an action force which causes equal amounts of impulse in opposite directions, and then you end up with your final momentums.
So here's an example of using uh, impulse or Newton's law. So there's a skater girl at rest on a skateboard, and then she jumps off the skateboard, and she uses 200 newtons of force for half a second, and she flies forward at 2 meters per second. Find the final velocity on the skateboard. So using impulse, the uh, negative J2 impulse, the impulse on the uh, skateboard, that's equal to the J1 impulse on the on the skater girl. Uh, we sub in the MVs and fill in the numbers. And we get that the skateboard will go flying off at negative 20 meters per second or 20 meters per second in reverse. Uh, using the action reaction law, uh, we know that if skater girl um, is being pushed off with 200 newtons of force, then the skateboard also receives 200 newtons of force. Uh, using that information, we can do F equals MA and find that the skateboard is going to be accelerating at negative 40 meters per second squared. And then using the uh, equations of motion, we know that um, the skateboard will be moving at negative 20 meters per second. So we get the same answer either way. All right, so in summary, uh, conservation of momentum really is Newton's third law in disguise. And uh, so your total momentum before is equal to your total momentum after. Um, you can use the impulse formulas if you prefer, or if you want to go um, into uh, force, you can use force to do the same kinds of questions. And uh, I like this law of conservation of momentum because it's amazing. It's even better than the law of conservation of energy since there is, uh, there is no momentum loss. It's 100% it's, uh, conserved 100% of the time, but often energy is lost or gained uh, from a system unless it's perfectly enclosed. All right, so I hope this helped. Uh, good luck with your studies in momentum.